Hi, hello. Greetings to you all in Jesus' name. Um, I'm just so glad to be part of uh, Youth Hub uh, today uh, through this video. And I thank Anamika for the invitation to share the word briefly with you. And I'm sure all of you are doing well and safe. Um, during this lockdown, many go through different uh, uh, experiences. So I just thought of uh, you know sharing something that is um, that we can take advantage of uh, just during the lockdown period. So um, I'm going to share very briefly from uh, John chapter 17 verse 4. Just before that, uh, let's pray and uh, come at this time and ask the Lord to speak to us. Amen. Father, thank you, Lord, for um, making this possible to meet with each other through Zoom, Father. As we are going to Lord, um, look at the scripture from John chapter 17 verse 4, Father speak to us, minister to us in your own unique way. So we that Lord who are listening right now Father would be built up, Lord would be blessed, Lord God, thank you God. We give you glory and we say blessed be your name now and forever, Amen. Amen. Yeah, let's quickly read. Um, John chapter 17 verse 4 I'm reading from NIV uh, it says I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do very simple verse but this is actually Jesus is talking to the Father Jesus it is this particular um, chapter is known as a priestly prayer that Jesus is offering to the Father so here it says I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. The same scripture in message translation, it says this, I glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail. Glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail of what you assigned me to do. Um, it is said that uh, an average man should listen to a particular message at least for about four times in order for him to get into a system. So um, you probably may have listened to um, preaching and teaching from this particular passage. But I want to just uh, focus our attention to this from this particular passage. I want to um, just take you on a little journey to talk about what is the task that God has assigned for you and I, just like God the Father has assigned the task for Jesus and uh, with Jesus gladly, you know, finishing the task and talking to his Father. Think of this for a minute. No. We, talking to our Father, as same manner as Jesus, who is our elder brother. Isn't it amazing? Let's look at this. Jesus had a task. Jesus was given a task. Jesus had to know the task that is assigned, given to him. And Jesus had to focus on him, focus on the task, I mean the given task, and he had to accomplish and he finished the task well. So today, if this is true of Jesus, I'm sure this is true of you for you. This is true of you and this is true of me as well. I'm sure we'll come across the scripture from Jeremiah. God has a plan for all of us, plan to prosper, not to harm. Yes, it is true. Before even the world was born, world was given birth or made or created. God had you in his mind. God had me in his mind. And God has planned an assignment, a task for you and I. And I believe we just have a, enough time on earth just to find the task and finish the task. Now, I want to um, expound a little more about the word task here in this context. Now, when I'm talking about the task in this context, I'm talking about his call, God's call for your life. God's will for your life and God's purpose for your life. 
many times we find it very hard to find and discover the call of God and the purpose of God and the will of God. And sometimes we struggle and it's not so easy to find the call of God, purpose of God and will of God. Now I want to put these three together and I want to use the word task. God has given a task. Now in order for us to identify what those tasks is, are the tasks are, I'm going to, um, uh, uh, from the scripture, uh, from the study, that I want to just give you a four handles for you to look into your life and look into God and find those tasks are. All right. So um, before that, let's read one more scripture. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Uh, 10. All the scripture very familiar, it's nothing new. Um, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The same scripture. I want to read from Living Bible. It says, It is God Himself who has made us what we are. And He has given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ages ago, long ages ago, that is long, long time ago, He planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. Which means, in any way, it says, created for good works. We are not saved by good works, but we are saved for good works, to do good works. All right. So, which means long, long time ago, he has planned this for us. If, if this is true, I think it would be wise for us to take a few minutes personally, sitting with him, Lord, would you reveal to me what you planned for me? long long time ago would you reveal to me the task the assignment that you have for me the call the purpose the will for me that you have assigned long long time ago okay on this um, context i want to give you four things for you to to, to look into to discovering this task for your life now God cannot use somebody with what they don't have. God cannot use you, God cannot use me with what I do not have. What you do not have. Which means the created for handy work means he has created meaning given something in us put something in us the capacity the ability the potential in us for the work the task that he has assigned and we need to know that now um, how do we know again I'm going to give you four answers let's look at this God can only use us with what we do have he cannot use with what we do not have now what do I have is a question that we should be asking what do I have first one birth I said birth you have been given birth by birth God as lavish something through our parents you have received an, an inheritance an inheritance has been passed on to you by your parents from your mother from your father you know there's a saying that says like father like son like father like son because certain characteristics of the father and mother is lavished upon the children it is seen in the children 
right? Now we have inherited certain characteristics, behavior, abilities from our parents and these are gifts from God to us. Now how do, you, how do we find? There are three things through which we, which we discover what we have taken by birth. First one, aptitude. What is aptitude? Which means, what am I good at? What am I good at? What are you good at? List down those things. Okay? These are some of the things that you have loved. You've been loved as well, right? Endowed with, right? Second one, temperament. How do we find the temperament? The question to ask here is, what do I enjoy doing? What do you enjoy doing? There could be a number of things, but list down. Because these are indication to find the task that he has assigned for you. And then the third one is intelligence. How good at figuring out something? It takes time to think. How, how good at figuring it, figuring out something? How good are you at figuring out something? Take time to think. Intelligence is the ability to make a useful contribution to others and the ability to take care of yourself. Intelligence, the knowledge that we have received from our parents. Right? So, first one is through birth what we have inherited. Yeah? That is one key to identify the task that he has assigned for us. Second one is training. Second one is training. The influence of training from birth to now. Training we receive from our family. Training we receive from church. Training we receive from our schools and colleges. Formal education. Vocational education. Short term skill development. List them all down. Because God cannot use with what we do not have. Now these trainings are what you possess, what you have. So this is another indication to find the task that he has for you. Okay. Second thing is training. The third thing is the grace of God. The powerful dynamics of the grace of God. It is God's empowering factor. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10 says, Paul says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. You are what you are by the grace of God. And his grace toward me was not in vain. And I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Now, how do we find the grace of God that is on our life, on your life? Very simply, you know, when someone congratulates you, or when someone affirms you, what do they say about you? Especially your parents and your spiritual parents, your mentors, your pastors, your leaders, your youth leaders. When they talk about you, what do they talk about you? When they congratulate you or when they affirm you, what do they say about you? That's very important. That Through that you can identify it is not you, it is a grace that is in your life, that is functioning in your life. So these are some of the things that you need to list down to identify the task that he has assigned for you. So if you don't know, just hear from others about what they say about you, what you're good at, you know, um, what your grace with. For some, of, uh, some it can be music, some it can be uh, uh, just communication, in a speech, and some it can be cooking, some it can be, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, 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 driving, and different things. But these are some of the things, you know, that uh, we can know and identify the task that the Lord has for you. Grace of God. And then the last one, the experience. The experience. The reality of life experience from birth to now. The experience of good, the experience of bad and all that. Now let me just uh, go through um, a few things to um, to bring to our memory of our experiences from birth to now. Right? Family experiences. What did you learn growing up in your family? List down those. And then educational experiences. What were your favorite time in the school? What were your favorite hobbies and favorite topics or subjects? Right? Those are important. 
and vocational training, different jobs and short term courses, those important and then spiritual experiences, most meaningful time that you had with God, most empowering time, a special moments, events that you had with God, those are needed to take it for consideration. All right. And then ministry experiences and then last, lastly, painful experiences, your failure, the things that you regret about, things you wish that it did not happen in your life. Now, God does not raise that too. It is said, it is a, the, the, uh, the, 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 the powerful way of God's ministry through one to one another is the area of hurt, the area of deepest hurt in your life. That's where God shows us light and God uses this very same thing, right? So as I bring this to closer, I talked about four things, four handles for you to discover your task, your will, God's will for your life, God's call for your life, God's purpose for your life. So for that, first one, what you have received, inherited from your birth. The second thing, what have you received through your training? What have you gained through your training? The third thing, what have you accumulated by the grace of God? What have you received? What have you received? by the grace of God. What is the grace of God that functions in you? And then the lastly, the experiences. Now all the three, God is taking into account. These are identification for you to find the task that the Lord has for you. Now as I bring this to closer, now the lockdown is not going to be lifted very soon. It looks like they may extend um, after May 3rd. I'm not sure, but we do have about um, a, 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 a one week or so, if you can take about 15 minutes a day to go through your own timeline, to look at what God has lavished you through birth and through training and then through uh, the grace, His grace and then through experiences. These are indications of finding God's call for your life, God's will for your life, God's purpose for your life and put together the task that He has assigned you while you are on earth. Amen. So I just want to pray with you and bless you. Uh, may God help us. Father, thank you for speaking to us. Lord, like Jesus talked to you and prayed to you, we also want to pray with you, to you, Father, Lord God, saying, Father, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the task that you have assigned me to do, by completing the task completing the work that you've assigned me to do. So Father, as we are in this journey, would you help us, Lord, as we go through, Lord, um, what we have been blessed with through our birth and training and the grace of God that you lavished upon us and experiences. Lord, speak to us and minister to us, Father. I thank you, God, for the opportunity for com of coming together in this manner. We bless your name together and I pray for your blessing to be upon everyone who is part of uh, this youth hub and I pray for uh, all the families who are connected with the uh, house of prayer. I pray for uh, a pastor family. Lord, um, thank you for uh, uh, giving us a, sen a sense of belonging in the house of God to your Father. We together want to give you glory and we say, blessed be your name for now and forever. Amen. Amen. I hope you are blessed. Thank you. God bless you.